Welcome to the Land Geek Podcast, your resource for information and tips to making money by buying and selling land. Let the Land Geek show you how to make a passive income by working smart, not working hard. Learn strategies and tricks to make money buying and selling raw land today. And here is the man that's going to help you do that, the Land Geek. Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, a.k.a. the Land Geek with thelandgeek.com, and today... I've got a really, really special treat because he doesn't know this, but I've been using his services for a long time been talking about his company for a long time. And today I've been, I don't know how this happened, just serendipity because he doesn't really know me, but I know I've known him and his company and I've been a big fan today. I hope you're sitting down. I've got Dave Schumacher, president and founder of Tax Title Services, Inc., which I've talked about in many podcasts before. And as you know, Tax Title Services is a company that has been qualifying land tax deed properties for title insurance without a quiet title action for the last 13 years. And to my knowledge, they're the only ones that do this. They performed their services on over 14,000 tax deeds, saving you and me, the investor, time, and money. Dave Schumacher in Huntington Beach, Newport Beach, California. You've lost all complaining privileges. How are you? <laughs> I'm great, Mark. Wow. Thanks. Uh, nice, nice little introduction there. <laughs> sure. Sure. So tell me, how, how did you become the president and founder of Tax Title Services? Well, my background is in, uh, in title insurance, basically. Uh, right out of college, I answered an ad in the paper for a management trainee position with a company called First American Title, who is the biggest standalone title company in America. I didn't realize that what a management trainee position was, you start in the mailroom and work your way up. <laughs> it was a good company. I, you know, uh, I was studying you know, real estate and how to buy properties, no money down. And this was back in the, in the mid 80s and, and as such. So one of the things I learned rather quickly in title insurance and in real estate in general, especially if you're in mortgage or escrow or title, is that if mortgage rates rise and, and, and refinancing slows down, well, the title companies will let go of 30% of their staff. So I learned rather quickly that I needed to master something that nobody else could do because then I'd be too valuable for them to let me go. So I would come in at 6 o'clock in, in the morning uh, as a title searcher, I eventually became a title searcher. But while I was doing microfilm, I was had my back then I had a Walkman, and I was when I was doing. If you guys, some of you guys might remember back the microfish machines. That's how public records were. Oh yeah. And you'd have to, so and yeah, so I'd breathe all this chemical all day, pressing this button for eight hours a day. But I was learning, studying how to buy mortgage foreclosures with no money down, not realizing that that the first mortgage foreclosure national recession was about to hit. This is, you know, late 1989, 1990, and then in the early 90s, you know, defense costs went out the door and, and people started got losing their jobs. And so the market had peaked in 89. And so here comes all this mortgage foreclosures. And so I had learned rather quickly to, you know, to keep my job. I'd come in at six in the morning and work and punch out the, the eight files I was supposed to punch out in these easy searches because I knew that nobody would touch a foreclosure search or a, a commercial search. And Wait, I, why, I, why wouldn't they touch those? Well, because it's like one of those files can take you eight hours to do. So oh. you, you wouldn't meet your quota. So no, nobody, everybody wanted to meet their quota, you know. So that's why I knew that if I could master what nobody else wanted to do, and that's always been my philosophy of success is, is I'm willing to do what most people won't do and master something that they, that people hate to do. I find niches to that. And so, I was mastered how to do a mortgage foreclosure title search and because nobody else would touch them. Long story short, when that market collapsed in the mid in the early 90s and all these foreclosures hit, uh, the title insurance industry had never had never tried to never uh, created any title units around foreclosures. So they they were they were starting a new a new business. And so my one one of the upper echelons came down to my boss and said, hey, we're going to start this new national default group. Who's your best foreclosing title searcher? Well, that, that's Dave. Okay. Well, Dave. So I became the first title officer for First American to to specialize in foreclosing titles. And eventually, what again? 
one of my secrets to success and creating niche titles, including tax title, comes of, comes out of conversations from clients. One of the things that any one of us can do is if somebody keeps calling you, asking you, hey, Dave, why can't you guys do this? Why can't you do this? And if you get too many calls about it, there, I always felt that, hey, there's a void there. We should create a product around it. So we were getting calls, or at least I was, from this has been the subprime days, New Century, Option One Mortgage, Fairbanks Capital, you know, First Horizon, uh, you know, they were saying, hey, Dave, it's great that you can do Orange County, California and all the title work for foreclosures there. But why can't you do Los Angeles County or San Bernardino? Because it was all no one had any no one had brought all that together. Right. So I so I said, well, I don't know. Let me look into it. And I did. Well, great, Dave. Now you can do Southern California. Why can't you do Northern California? All right. Let me look into it. And so we did. We created it. And then Arizona, Nevada. And then I saw the future of the industry was going national. I, I, I saw it two years ahead of it. So I ended up developing with me in a laptop, one man office at the time. I developed first what's now what back then was called Lenders Advantage. It was a national default group where any any mortgage lender who needed to foreclose, they could come to one office anywhere and, and we could handle any title work from foreclosure to REO to resale and clean up all these messy titles the whole way through, creating a one stop shop for them. And then when I left the company in ninety nine, that little group I started was then had 400 employees, and we were doing about 50,000 mortgage foreclosure titles a month, about $26 million in business. Hugely very successful thing. Wow. So, so when um, so say at the same time I developed that, I was getting these calls from tax lien investors, institutional Wall Street securitized money. You know, in the in the old days it was Bear Stearns. You know, in which Bay and J.P. Morgan and 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 all that. These guys were taking securitized money and. Basically, nationally, as you know, Mark, you know, you buy tax deeds. Well, there's tax liens as well. Right. Where, you know, the, this, the ta- 3,000 tax collectors in America need to collect delinquent property taxes when people don't pay their taxes or property taxes. So they still need that money because that money is what paves our roads, what builds hospitals, funds schools and such like that. So they need that money. And the only way to collect it when people don't pay is they sell it to to like to investors out there who will – uh, they'll say, hey, Mr. Investor, we'll, if you pay these taxes, we will give you a lien securitized, collateralized by the property, and we'll give you a statutory rate of money anywhere from 8 to 24% of your money. And, in, and if they don't pay you in a certain amount of time, whether it's one to three years, we will, you can then foreclose and get the property free and clear. Right. And, right. So, and so I get, but the problem well, well, with Now the, let me ask you, is it really free and clear? The answer is yes, subject to... Everybody getting notified, and that we'll, I'll jump into that in a second okay. about what's the whole issue behind these things. But yeah, the only thing that you do take the property subject to on a tax deed, Mark, as you probably know, is code enforcement liens. Right. Uh, municipality liens will survive a tax sale. So uh, yes, normally mortgages are wiped out. Uh, again, upon them receiving the, the foreclosure notice and they had the right to pay the taxes to secure their property, the owners and all that. But IRS liens, some people are, you know, say, well, IRS liens survive. And even some tax collectors will tell you the IRS liens survive. The IRS liens don't survive as long as they get notified and they have an extra 120 days to redeem. But after that 120 days, they are wiped out. So, but code enforcement liens, water sewer, utility liens, like if you don't cut the law and they can, you know, the county code enforcement officer comes out and cuts that lawn for you on your on this one of your properties well that code that they slap a lien against the property those things will survive a tax so so that's pretty much your due diligence those of you who are investing in these is that you need to want to go out you want to check to see what code liens are against the property because you will take the property so too it's a huge issue in florida a lot of people out there might be listening florida is a big tax deed state they have tax deeds every day being sold at the county court courthouse steps and they're very aggressive. Like Palm Beach County will charge you $150 a day for a code lien. So be careful in Florida about what when you're buying these properties, you need to look at the code liens because uh, you will take it and you can't get them discounted unless you're Habitat for Humanity. Unless what? Unless you're Habitat for Humanity. Oh, Habitat for Humanity. I see. supervisors I see. will work with them, you know, but you, you the investor, no, they, you will take it subject to. And sometimes those liens are even worth more than the property is worth and you've so be careful in the code liens. But outside of that, you would have a company like ours that to help you with with addressing all the other stuff. So right. while I back at First American, I was getting calls from institutional clients 
spending hundreds of million dollars buying these taxing certificates nationwide. And most people pay their taxes, but about 5%, now 10% because the marketplace and all these mortgage foreclosures, they end up with having to foreclose and they get title like you, Mark, you're going to a tax deed. So you're actually buying the tax, the property itself. You're getting a tax deed. Right. Well, that these people were saying, Dave, Hey, this is back in 1995. Hey, Dave, why, you know, I got this property and I went to go open up escrow and sell it. I had a buyer full price offer, bought it for pennies on the dollar. I'm going to hit a home run. And now I can't do anything with it because the title company tells me they won't insure it. And so I kept getting these these calls, like so many, like, Dave, why won't you guys insure? Why won't you insure? And I'd run up the flagpole to senior underwriting at First American, all all the council and say, hey, guys, why don't we insure these things? And nobody could tell me. And again, because I got so many calls about it, I started looking into it. I started pulling all the case law to see what is the issue with these tax deeds? Why do we not like them? And the answer is, is 99% of tax sales that are overturned, meaning challenged by either the former owner or the mortgage holder, basically they go to court and say, hey, your honor, I'm in t- under the constitution, I'm required to get due process, meaning I need to get notice that somebody's taken my property either for taxes or for a failure to pay my mortgage, they have to give me the chance to pay that, to stop this process from you taking my property. And so the courts are very strong and they make it very, they want to make it very difficult to take somebody's property. And, and that's, and that's prudent. And you, we don't want to make it so easy that anybody can just lose their property. But at the same time, well, we, you know, if we need to get them noticed. So that was always the issue. And so we, the, we, the title insurance industry, we don't trust that the tax collector, whoever's doing that noticing, Mark's entitled to get notified. And if Mark's notice was sent to Mark and it came back undelivered, well, Mark's due process rights may have not been met. And Mark may be a sophisticated guy and he may know an attorney and he may file a lawsuit to overturn that tax sale or that tax deed because he didn't get notified because had he gotten notified, he would have paid the taxes and and then this property wouldn't have gone to sale. Right. Let me ask you, though, how often does that actually happen where it's challenged? Well, before we came along, it was it's about 20 percent, you know, okay. and in certain states like South Carolina, that can go up to 50 percent. And oh, the reason wow. being is a state like South Carolina or Mississippi is what's called a strict compliance state, meaning if one little thing is wrong with the tax sale, then the whole thing is wrong. So let's say Mark is the owner of a of the property. He doesn't pay his taxes, and then there's there's a mortgage with uh, with Wells Fargo on there. Wells Mark gets notified. Wells Fargo gets sent notice, but it went to Wachovia, which is now Wells Fargo. Well, just Wells Fargo could argue that even though uh, let's say they or Mark could argue that hey, even though I got notified, Wells Fargo didn't. So hey, Your Honor, the whole thing's wrong, and, I, and I'm overturning it, and he and you would win. So you can see it's very easy to attack a title like that. So it can get that again at twenty percent. You know, one deal goes south for a title company. Let's say they've insured a property for a hundred thousand dollars, right? And that you know, and all of a sudden they got it. You know, Mark challenges the sale, and then all of a sudden you know, Dave who bought this property and First American insured, he bought at the tax sale. Now he's got a title com- company insuring him. Well, he's gonna. I can. Hey, First American, I have a claim. Mark's overturning it, and they turn over turn to my title. And either now you need to defend me or you got to write me a check for hundred grand. Well, a couple, couple hits like that and the title company is going to go, yeah, we don't want to touch these things with a 10-foot pole. And that's why they don't do that. I see. So the, it's even one deal is, is, is more than enough for them to go. And it's a lot of it's just ca- bad case law. There's just, you know, there's cases every month, you know, that are filed and that just scare the attorneys, you know, and attorneys, you know, that whether – they just don't like risk. And so First American looked at it as just a risky title. So I, I, I said, look, guys, there's, there's obviously a void in this industry. And, and, I, and so, bef- so right now, before, well, before tax title came along, you would have to, the title company would say, hey, Mark, in order for me, us to insure your property, we're gonna, we want you to go hire an attorney. We want you to sue the former owners, the mortgage holders, the, anybody who had an interest in that property at the time of that tax sale. We want you to sue them and get what's called a quiet title judgment, right. meaning quieting title or clear title, quiet meaning clear title in court. Have a judge say, Mark, yes, you're now the owner of the property. Then First American says, hey, Mark, you get the court to say that property is yours. Well, then you, you come back to us and then we'll feel comfortable to insure. Right, right. How, how much does a quiet title typically cost with an attorney? 
Well, in, in states like my state, like California and, you know, and even Arizona where you're at, Mark, is, you know, that'll cost you three to $8,000 to do. And it'll probably take you six months to a year right. to, to, do a, to do a quiet time. So imagine you have this asset and you can't sell it or do anything with it. And sometimes these properties are in bad shape and the city may be slapping liens against you and you can't do anything because you're suing everybody in court. And so that's why I came up with like, look, guys, at First American, what if we looked at the noticing and we took the philosophy that, hey, if we were doing the noticing ourselves on behalf of the tax collector, could we have found Mark where notice was sent and not delivered? If we could find Mark, well, the tax collector should have found Mark. So Mark to us is a risk. And I, we, I call it slapping the beehive. Hey, guys, why don't we slap the hive and see who wants to come out and sting whether or not they got notice? I mean, yes, if they get notice, it still doesn't mean it's still good to insure because, because Mark, the owner, is still living in the property. Wells Fargo's in the middle of a mortgage foreclosure. Everybody got notice. Why are they still foreclosing? Something's wrong. And so there's still a high risk of challenge. So instead of So what if we took the notion that if we can find Mark, then the tax secretary should find Mark. So instead of suing Mark, what if we just knocked on Mark's door or called Mark or, or sent him a letter and go, hey, Mark, this is Dave Schumacher. I'm with Tax Title Services. We noticed that we, our client purchased your property at a tax sale. It looks like you didn't pay your property taxes. Our client bought your property at a tax sale. Um, did you, you know, it looks like notice was sent to you and not delivered. We're wanting to make sure, Mark, that you knew about this. What do you, what do you think? And now Mark's going to be mad. He's going to be upset or he's going to know about it or whatnot. So the idea is, what if we go through a vetting process of suing him? Why don't we just talk to him, or we flush flush him out, or in, like Wells Fargo out? You know, if there's a mortgage foreclosure going on, contact the foreclosing attorney. Say, hey, do you know? Hey, do you know you Wells Fargo is there foreclosing, but they got wiped out at a tax sale, and the attorney's always going to go, well, we didn't, we weren't notified, we weren't notified. I'm like, well, right. we pulled the records, and you were, and here's your check your email because I just I just scanned and emailed your signature. So what would you like to do? So again, so so tax. So what I said to First Americans, look, why don't we create this certification process? Um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go start my own company. I'm gonna call it Tax Title Services, and why don't I issue a certification to you guys, First American or Stewart, whoever that we that we work with? You guys, will we'll we'll go through this underwriting process. You guys approve. We'll be faster and cheaper than an attorney. Clients will pay us in lieu of an attorney. And First American, you will have an, a product that you will feel comfortable to insure, and, and it'll be no cost of sales. Okay, and they said, said Dave, great, we love it. So in 2000, I left the company, and July 17th of 2000, Tax Title Services was born, and um, and so we do we do this vetting process. This and so what we do is we'll issue a certification that that says we've carved, we've we've addressed all the noticing issues. We've carved out those people who would be adversarial. And we will mediate a buyback or a workout. And this is where the 20% I talk about, Mark, is, you know, Dave, well, you know, one of the questions we get is, well, Dave, you, you, you can certify all of these, right? Well, the answer is no. Just like in a quiet title action, some of these, you, if you hired an attorney and you sued the owners, they may contest or challenge you. Right. Well, that happens in our process, too. And the, again, the worst case scenario for us is that the 20% we may not be able to certify we will mediate a buyback or a workout with the former owner. So worst case scenario is normally you would get bought out at a profit or get your money back plus interest, like if you were still had a, you know, like a lien holder, right, a certificate right. holder. So you know, isn't that the same process, Mark? Same result if you if you quite a title and you can and you can the party contested and you you and your attorney settled nine months later. But yeah, we, yeah, we will exactly. do that too. But with but we're not we're not billing you by the hour. We're just title guys clearing title for you. So in the instant, we create such added value because Mark, like I was saying, I'm an investor too. In order to create these title products, I like the mortgage foreclosing the National Fall Group. I went out and bought VA foreclosures in 1995 because it's a knowledge based sale. If I it's it, not everybody knows about tax deeds or mortgage foreclosures. So I felt it was important for me to be able to talk shop with my clients. I can create good title products, also add value. And these instances where there's a mediation or a buyback or a workout, since I'm an investor myself and I've done my own deals, I know how to go toe to toe with an attorney right. to negotiate right. with them and all that. And so like we create, we don't get make a lot of money on a deal like that, but we create such added value that we put you in these workouts and you get your money back. 
plus interest plus a premium depending on it's like it's like poker it's like cards what leverage you have and we know which states we can play hardball in but then the other 80% you know that's a, that that alone is worth as a great service because you know you're not paying me $10,000 as an attorney to get the same result you're paying me $1,000 in my costs and a few bucks for my time to 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 get you that same result but then the 80 other 80% is in 30 to 60 days, Mark, you've used the service. You've got a property and you want to sell it. And well, in 30 to 60 days from you acquiring your tax deed, you can be selling that thing and have full title insurance backed by us, by tax title, who, who bridges the gap between the title insurance industry. And so you're paying us anywhere from $1,600 to $2,300, which is just including all the costs. Um, the website's taxtitleservices.com. There's a pricing schedule there. Um, but it's like you said. It's been 13 years. We're, we'll be 14 years this July. We do this nationwide. We are pretty much the only company that can do this this way. And and the reason is is because the title company. It's about relationship marketing, Mark. It's about who you know. Right. I know the industry. I'm one of them. I'm former First American Vice President guy. I set up their National Fog groups. I know all the attorneys, the foreclosing attorney. I know the whole network. Everybody. So they trust me because I'm one of them. And that's because I bring those relationships. I can bridge the gap for you, Mark, the tax deed investor, to all your clients, anybody listening to this, buying tax deeds. You got this title problem. Now you know how to fix it and it gives you a leg up in your competition. Exactly, exactly. So, so let me ask you, with raw land, how often do those get contested? Because typically you you're have an unemotional owner. <laughs> well, um, We've only had four claims in the history of the company because of this overkill vetting process that we do. Wow. And Mark, to be honest, our biggest claim, the only one claim we've ever paid was on a vacant piece of land. No And the tax kidding. deed was 20 years old, believe it or not. That's <laughs> unbelievable. It was a crazy deal. And then you know why? Because that vacant lot happened to be next door to a Marriott. Huh. And okay. Marriott wanted that land for a parking lot. And so they tracked down the former owner who got the tax deed 20 years ago. They got a deed from, he had passed away, the former owner, and they got a deed from the estate. And, um, and then they, and then they challenged the tax deed that we had insured because, uh, it was 20 years old and we took the, we, you know, we saw the notice was sent and not delivered. And we, we, we took a risk on that one because it's 20 years old, you know, and the statute of limitations had expired. I know four years, you only had four years to challenge, but here's how, why the title companies don't like this is because even on a 20 year tax deed, we had to, we, we rewrote it. We had to settle with the estate and cause the, the court overturned it even after 20 years, that was crazy to me. But so wow. we, that, so to be honest, it, it, how emo it vacant land becomes as you mark the reason you are investing in vacant land is if you know one of the things I like to do and you probably do the same is you know I'm I I used to fly helicopters for not just for fun and one of the things I would do is I'd use the helicopter to fly ahead of and look at vacant land way out 40 miles away in the desert sure. because eventually 20 years from now that you look at the arrow of progress land will get will eventually get progress will catch up to that land and then all of a sudden builders will want your land those 40 acre tracks out in the desert here in riverside and san Bernardino county well back in the early 90s those things were you you could buy a tax deed for five thousand forty acres for five thousand dollars at a tax sale well now pro 20 years later progress hits now those tracks are selling for eight hundred thousand dollars right so right. so the so the the answer is it doesn't matter you know, it, tax deed is whether it's a five thousand dollar vacant lot or whatever. If you're buying right, it, it it will become attractive and it can get attacked. <clears throat> sure, sure. So, how does the process work then? So, I go to the tax deed sale, I buy a hundred properties, and then I go to the website and start logging in the APN numbers. Like, how does it work? Well, uh, to utilize our service, um, they, the website is very extensive. You can place the order online. You can. There's a, there's a huge frequently asked questions and answers there. After 13 years, you know, 14,000 of these, we know all the questions, what, what people are asking. And so that's all on there. But so, yes, you would go to the website and you, 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 you could place the order online. You can f place on the line. Uh, you can pay online, all that. But, you know, what we do is we, we just need to get started is we would need the order form filled out. We would need a cut. We don't even need your tax deed because a lot of people are like, well, Dave, can I get started without the tax deed? And you know, sometimes you, your tax deeds don't come for like 60 days sometimes. So sometimes you may just have a receipt of sale. Like 
like if uh, you're, you're buying online, you know, you get a receipt of sale and the taxi comes later. We can get started with your receipt of sale because our service takes about, you know, 45 to 60 days to do what we do. Right. So while you're waiting for the 60 days for your tax deed to show up, we can be doing our job for you so that by the time the tax deed does show up, you're not wasting, having to wait another 60 days for us to do our job. We can already be doing that for you. Exactly. So what we need is the order form, the receipt of sale. Um, we do require a, a, a deposit up front of $750 to get started. The balance will be due at the end. Um, again, with average price is 1600 to 2300 and we're charging you. Seven fifty to fifteen hundred dollars plus cost, but there's a complete breakdown of the cost, which is the same kind of cost you would incur in a quiet title, where an attorney would have to order a title search. We have to do that too. We order a title search, we order the foreclosure records, we skip trace, and 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 uh, and 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 then try to underwrite, you know, any of the noticing issues and all that. So order form, receipt of sale or tax deed, and seven hundred fifty dollars to get started. Um, we do offer additional services um, for what we in certain states like Georgia. Right. Where I've personally invested, I like penalty states like Georgia. You get 20% of your money for day one. Love that kind of state. Same thing like in Texas. It's a penalty state. Boom, 25% day one. But in states like Georgia or Montana or Indiana, um, we do offer the noticing service. Because again, Mark, I told you noticing is the issue. So in those states where we get to do the noticing for a client, and in even some states like in Louisiana, we get to do the noticing for the tax collectors, you know, uh, that's the ideal process. If the title company could do its own noticing, it's going to overkill that noticing and make sure it's done right so nobody can overturn it because we went, we overkilled and sent to everybody in 10, 10, last 10 years addresses and all their relatives and estates and all that. So we do offer the noticing service for those of you investing in Georgia where you have to do your own noticing to foreclose out the rights of redemption or to convert your tax lien to a tax deed. We do offer that service as well. Again, all on the website. But feel free to shoot me an email, you guys. Um, my email uh, uh, to me and my staff is all on, is on the website. Uh, it's, again, it's taxtitleservices.com. Um, after we do our job, 30 to 60 days later, uh, we've, we're ready to issue the certification to First American or to Steward, whoever we're working with in that particular state. At that point, you pay for our, our, our balance. We will invoice you for a title policy that we will order on your behalf. That completes the process. Because we're not an insurance company, what we do is not doesn't clear title. It does not a, a clearing of title in court. It's not a quiet title. It's a qualification process that First American and other title companies will recognize in lieu of a quiet title. But until you get a title policy, you're still an insured, even though we're ready. Hey, Mark, we're ready to we're ready to issue the certification and get you insurance. But until you buy the insurance, you're not you're uninsured. Right. You're still on your own. So we recommend you get the insurance. So once we've paid the bill. You guys have paid your bill. We've ordered the title policy. A policy will be issued insuring you as the owner of the property. At that point, you can be selling the property. Once you get under contract, you'd come back through us and First American and or Stewart or whoever we're working with, and then they will reinsure you again. Uh, and again, faster, cheaper alternative. Um, it's, it's, it, it, there are some caveats in states like Florida and South Carolina when you're dealing with buyer attorneys. You're going to want to control the transactions by paying for the title insurance for your buyers, just FYI. Right. Because otherwise, a buyer attorney who may, who may not be underwritten, if the buyer gets to choose title and his title underwriter or, or uh, attorney does, is not, uh, doesn't insure tax deeds, well, they're going to kill your deal and you're going to waste your time with a buyer who can't perform. So you want to control the transactions for those of you in states like South Carolina, Mississippi, Louisiana, Florida. You want to pay for the title insurance. You want to put in your contracts that you, hey, Mr. Buyer, I'm paying for the title insurance. Thus, I get to choose the title company. And I'm choosing uh, First American over here or title agent over here uh, because they will insure. And I have a title policy. And because I'm paying for your insurance, you we're going to run it through this and sign here. And then I by see. controlling the transaction, that's going to save you guys a lot of headaches and dealing with attorneys who may try to kill your deal. Right, right. Well, this is fantastic. Now, I, I'm going to take taxtitleservices.com. I always do a tip of the week. So I'm stealing yours, by the way. So <laughs> well, my, yep. tip, my tip well, of the Mark, week. You steal it all you want. <laughs> thank you. It's going to be because it, it, it's really kind of a no-brainer. I, I Again, Dave, I don't think you have any competition, do you? Uh, there's, a, there's a couple companies, you know, one who kind of copied what we do, but they're, uh, they're, they're but basically no. They're, 
we're, from a national standpoint and on at our level and, and our track record and the underwriters who back us, no, we're pretty much the only game in town outside of attorneys. Right, right. And I get this question all the time. How, you know, how do I get title insurance on tax deed property or tax lien property? I'm like, oh, there's a solution. And so that my tip of the week is www.taxtitleservices.com. So now that I stole yours, Dave, what is your tip of the week? Oh, put me on the spot, man. I was going to use my own website. But yeah. and, and, and since you're um, in Newport, again, I have I, I have no sympathy for you. <laughs> yeah, um, uh, yeah, we are blessed here with 75 degree weather, nice and sunny, blue skies today. Um, so good. I just, but, by the way, I just left Minneapolis uh, this weekend for uh, for a friend, and um, it was it was two and snowing, and they were yeah, happy about uh, it. They're like, well, oh, yeah, it's I, warm. When I but uh, when I get my property tax bill every year, um, you, you know, the, the high price we pay for it in some instances, but I wouldn't have it any other way. But my tip of the week, Mark, um, let's see, I got two of them, two websites. Um, one, uh, those of you who are want to buy online tax deeds, there's two sites I recommend. Uh, Mark, you may probably know some of these, but there's bidforassets.com. That's B-I-D. Yeah, yeah, I, I know bidforassets. That's a good one. Go the ahead. Number four assets. All a lot of the tax sales in California and Washington and Michigan are are, are held on that site. So those of you want to want to be able to buy properties from your computer, you know, and bid on those. Go to bidforassets.com. The other one is is out of Louisiana, which we're a, we're a partner partner with, is uh, civicsource.com. You can actually purchase adjudicated properties throughout Louisiana, uh, through, through as well as bid on tax sales there. Uh, that's again civicsource. Civicsource.com. You know, buying Louisiana is like buying in a, in a in a different country. Well, again, how do you know? I you know people ask me, well, Dave, where do you personally invest? And I go, well, I like to go where it's all messy and where there's not a lot of competition because I know how to play in those in that in that in that kind of arena. And that's why I like Louisiana. And there's nothing against Louisiana. It's just just Louisiana has a lot of property and uh, a lot of a lot of back taxes are not paid there. So right. so there's not a lot of competition. So like Alabama, Alabama is a difficult state. Sometimes it could take you six years to get your stuff done in there. But because I like to go because because I used to do a lot of lot in Florida, and uh, but but in the Florida, there's so many people bidding on those bidding on the sales that sometimes properties are being bid up to market value, and that's not a good play for me. You know, I like sure. to I like to be able to park my money or do fix and flips or whatever. You know, but though you know, wealth's made on passive income and renting and all that. So I just like to go where where it's messy, and that's how I've carved out my niches. Mortgage foreclosing titles messy, tax deeds are messy, titles are messy. They, by doing that, I create a niche, and the same thing in my own investing. I go where I can play, where not a lot of people like to play. So I like Louisiana, and I like because one, you can buy a lot for 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 cheap, you know. Sure. So, and I remember when I was 20 years old, and you know, I I I, I um my I, my I wanted to buy one house a year, uh, with with no speculation, and and had to cover. I had to be able to rent it out, PITI, and that's why I was buying VA foreclosures back then in Florida. Because I could afford a two hundred dollar payment where a con- if a tenant didn't pay me, I could afford that. I, I couldn't afford it at the time because I was just right out of college. I couldn't afford a a th- two thousand dollar payment in, in California on a t- on a property. But I could. Have, so I was buying. So I've always believed in in in, in buying uh, and holding on. And you know those are the kind of things you can do in states where where think where where housing's cheaper. And you just want to buy in good school districts and, and, and whatnot. So the idea being if you bought one house a year like that, like a 401k, and you had good management, good property management, people you trust running it and overseeing it, and you had PITI and you bought in good school districts and, and a bre- bread and butter home, maybe lower middle income home, and uh, you held on to that for 20 years. Imagine being retiring in your 60s and you've been buying one of these houses a year and you've held on to it. If you, one of the things I told – if you, you know, I, t- I tell people, and, and even like your own parents, Mark, or my parents, I always tell them, hey, dad, think about if you, uh, if you, if you kept every house, instead of selling the one house to buy the next, imagine if you kept every one of those. And, right. and so, dad, now that you're retired, you know, you would have, you would have probably seven free and clear homes. Imagine if you were renting those homes for $1,000 a month and you had seven of those right now free and clear. That's 7000 a month, no work. No, imagine no social security, no job. I mean, you know, even if you were bankrupt, if you had, could, 
at seven thousand dollars a month that's that's a that's a full time job to to most right. people or even better well, than well, that. Well, Dave, I, I have a better way of doing it with uh, with raw land and less competition, but that's that's in my investors toolkit. I'll well, to, you know I'll, what? I'll explain it to you so after the podcast. So, what's your? Here's another tip, Mark. What sure. is your website? How about that? That's a good tip of the week. Well, I, you know, mine's www.thelandgeek.com. There so, you go. Uh, There's a tip yeah. of the week right there. There, there you like, go. There you go. Little what, strategy right there for Mark. Yeah. So, Dave, I, I really, really appreciate you taking the time and sharing your vast knowledge on uh, on a very complicated subject. I, I hope you come back. And uh, we can do this again. Oh, I had fun. I always enjoy it, Mark. I appreciate it. Appreciate the opportunity. Great talking to you. Thanks, Dave. And so if you guys want to learn more about Dave, again, go to www.taxtitleservices.com. It's an unbelievable service. And of course, if you want to learn more about me, go to www.theleangeek.com. Download for free the Passive Income Blueprint. Get the ebook, How to Avoid the Three Fatal Land Buying Mistakes. And of course, get this podcast delivered each week into your email inbox. And look, give me some love. Check out some wholesale land as well at FrontierPropertiesUSA.com. This is Mark Podolsky with Dave Schumacher. uh, Dave, thanks again. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. Thank you for listening to another episode of The Land Geek. Join us next time for more tips, secrets, and information that will help you succeed. Stay connected with The Land Geek on Facebook at facebook.com slash thelandgeek.